Hello guys and welcome to Freebird Screw and welcome to the 75 day hard generative AI learning challenge and it's day one and we will deep down into the generative AI from the scratch and I will tell you everything about the large landscape of artificial intelligence. So in this video, I will tell you about the generative AI and its various types, the algorithms used, its application and the latest advancements that, that are already happened until January 2024. So let's start it. Okay. So first question is, what is generative AI? So generative AI refers to a class of artificial intelligence that has multiple algorithms that possess the remarkable ability to generate new realistic data that wasn't the part of the original data. Okay. So this stands for a, a discriminatory model which are primarily focused on categorizing and classifying the existing data. So if we say in the mathematics, these algorithms can understand the underlying probability distribution of a data set and create new data that resembles the original data. Okay. So in this way, it just understands the probability dis uh, distributions of your own existing data and can build a new data in the end. Okay. So now, what are the like different types of uh, generative AI algorithms? Okay. The first algorithm is generative adversarial networks. Okay. And the second is variational auto encoders. So, okay. So the first is generative adversarial networks are the most well known and the widely used generative AI algorithms. They consist of a generator network and a discriminator network, which are trained simultaneously through adversarial learning. Okay. So now, if I just say that what is adversarial mean? So adversarial mean to oppose each other. Okay. So adversarial training means it is a method that is used to improve the robustness and the generalization of neural network by incorporating the opposing examples that can contradict with each other so that the model can learn faster. Okay. So this GANs can aims to create realistic data while the discriminator network is to distinguish between the real and the generated data. Okay. So the, this dynamics create a competitive process that ultimately results in a generation of highly convincing synthetic content. Okay. For example, if you can say the creation of realistic images by the GANs has found various applications in many fields such, such as uh, image to image translation or deep fake videos, which are actually a fraud nowadays. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is variational auto encoders. So variational auto encoders take the probabilistic approach to, to generate the new content or generate the new data. They learn the underlying distribution of that data and use it to generate new samples. Okay. So the variational auto encoders are characterized by the encoder and decoder architecture, where the encoder maps the input data to a probabilistic distribution and the decoder samples from this distribution to generate the new data. For, for ex uh, example, uh, variational autoencoders auto have been applied to image generation where they excel in capturing the latent space of images and creating the diverse high quality AI images. And the other applications include the anomaly de detection, text to image synthesis and drug recovery. So these all things are you can use by using these two algorithms. Okay. But the generative adversarial networks and the variational auto encoders are both popular type of generative AI algorithms in the field of machine learning, but they differ in their architecture, training methodologies, and also the application. Now discuss about the uh, difference between GANs and VAS. Okay. So uh, the first is architectural difference. So the GAN consists of two neural networks. The first is generator. Second is discriminator. They are trained simultaneously through the adversarial training or the opposing contradictive training. The generator create the synthetic data and the discriminator tries to distinguish between the real and the synthetic data. The adversarial process leads to the improvement of both of the networks over the time. This, this is the gap. Now the variational auto encoders have an encoder and decoder architecture. The decoder maps input data to a probabilistic distribution in a latent space and the decoder samples from this distribution to generate the new data. The variational autoencoders also focus on the learning the underlying 
probabilistic structure of the data as well okay so now next is the difference of training methodologies so the gans use adversarial training where the generator and discriminator networks are in the content competition the generator aims to generate the data that is indistinguishable from the real data while the discriminator tries to distinguish it from the real data and the new synthetic data but in the case of variational auto encoders it uses the probabilistic approach during training variational auto encoders maximize the likelihood of generating the input data while ensuring that the learned latent space follows the specific probability distribution that can be gaussian only okay now the next uh, difference is between the latent space representation in the gans we do not explicitly define the structure latent latent space the latent space in gans is typically considered as a byproduct of the adversarial train training process so it may not have a clear interpretability uh, you can't interpret the gan latent space representation but in the variational auto encoders we explicitly model a latent space with a well defined structure the encoder maps input data to a uh, to a distribution in the latent space allowing it for interpolation and manipulation of the representations okay now we have the difference of sample quality and diversity as well. so in gans are known for generating high quality and visually realistic samples they excel in capturing complex patterns in the data and producing the sharp and coherent images but the variational auto encoders tend to generate samples that may be less visually realistic as compared to gans but they are often more diverse okay and vans are also good at exploring the latent space and generating a range of different samples from the given distributions okay now the difference of applications as gans are widely used in tasks such as image to image generation style transfer generating the realistic images videos or even text they are also employed in the content of deep fake videos as well okay but the variational auto encoders uh find their application in the task where we have a structured latent spaces beneficial such as image generation variational image synthesis data augmentation or creating the more synthetic data okay now now let's talk about the applications of uh, generative ai in this various fields okay so applications are in the like art and creativity where generative ai has revolutionized the world of art enabling to create unique pieces of art ranging from the paintings to the images which look more realistic than ever then we have the medical imaging as well where generative ai helps to make a significant strides in generating the synthetical medical images of training purposes okay then we have content creation and gaming as well so oh, okay so like like 2023 was landmark a year of generative ai which witnessed ground breaking advancements in both the research and the real world applications so now let's deep down into the hottest trends or the greatest advancements that happen in the large language model generative ai in 2023 until 2024 january okay so the first ground breaking advancement that happens is in the reinforcement learning with human feedback this approach leverage human input to guide the learning process of large language models allowing them to continuously improve and adapt to evolving needs it's like ha having a personal trainer for your ai ensuring that it stays on a track and delivers the result you desire okay and there is also a uh, techniques which are a uh, sub categories of this uh, reinforcement learning that that first is called LORA and the second is called QLORA these techniques pro provide the lightweight and efficient way to fine tune the large language models for specific task imagine adding specialized paint brushes to your generative ai artist enabling it to master properly detailing for specific artistic styles with ease so with the help of these two techniques you can master this kind of uh, work in your large language models and next is improved multi modality the la large language models have become increasingly adapted handling the multiple types of data it can handle the text images and audio as well okay so this open up the exciting possibilities for a cross model generation like creating music inspired by the paintings or narrating stories 
based on the video clips. So you can have this multi modality in now. Okay. So now next is LLM powerhouses. That, that is the first is called uh, GPT-4. So OpenAI latest and most powerful large language model boosting about 100 trillion parameters and remarkable improvement in reasoning, factual accuracy and creative abilities. Think of it as a master storyteller with the access of world vast library of knowledge. Okay. And then we have some advanced uh, uh, libraries as well, like TensorFlow Generative. This open source library from the Google provides a com comprehensive toolkit for building and training various generative AI models, including the GANs and variational autoencoders. Okay. Think of it as an AI art studio where you can like stock all your brushes, paints, and assets and bring your creative vision to life. And then we have PyTorch Lightning. This framework streamlines the development of uh, deep learning models, including generative AI models as well. It simplifies the coding process and accelerates the experiment by using the GPUs as well. Okay, and then we have Stable Diffusion. So the, this Stable Diffusion model excels at generative high quality content or images with complete minor details and diverse styles. It's like having a magical camera that you can capture with your own fantasies and imagination. Okay. So, so guys, that's it in this video in day one. And you know that how generative AI algorithms work, their differences, their architectures as well. And in our next video, we'll learn about the neural networks because these are the building blocks of generative AI models with the uh, attention mechanism and all these kind of things as well. So in our upcoming sessions as well, I also keep doing the research on the latest advancements of AI along with the benchmark things that are used to learn for generative AI like NLP, their algorithms, transformers, everything will need to learn. Okay, just be, be with it. If you want to know about the prompt engineering, machine learning, explainable AI, financial data and analysis and more interesting generative AI topics, you can also find that on my YouTube videos as well as in my blogs which I write each day. Okay, just be, be with it. Subscribe, like and comment uh, uh, this video and share it with your friends and we'll learn everything from scratch in this 75 day hard challenge. Thank guys. Thank you so much.